drilled me. So who do we get to play next? <laughs> you get Oral. Try not to sign the ball. Moving over quickly to Benjamin and Brunson, where Doyle moved all in before the flop, and David called with pocket jacks. David has the best hand and has Doyle covered here. Doyle had under 15 big blinds in a stack with the blinds of two and 4,000. So he's going to look to try to get a double up here. Picked a bad time against two jacks. He can still spike a queen, though. Flop is 484. That's the big boy. Not looking good for Brunson. That's Fields, big boy. And Barry's pups. Here's the turn. Turn is a seven of clubs, and now Doyle's down to a queen. Don't look good. Yeah, things looking a bit more grim for Doyle. Three outs to stay alive. No lady on the river, and David Benjamin moves on. Game, set, and match for the former professional tennis player. So David Benjamin eliminates poker legend Doyle Brunson. Benjamin moves on to the round of eight for the first time in the tournament. Joining him, MIT grad and math whiz Andy Block. This year's tournament bracket buster, Oral Hershiser. In 1996, World Series champ Huck Seed. Let's send it down to Leanne, who's standing by with our Cinderella story. Oral, congratulations. Moving on to the round of eight. You're adding to your baseball collection here. Now, if winning the Heads Up Poker Championship was <laughs> akin to winning the World Series, where are we at right now in this thing? I think we've made the playoffs, just uh, probably getting here, getting through the uh, wild card games and now into the National League playoffs. You've been pretty confident up until now, but when you just stepped up on this stage with me, you kind of let out a deep breath. Yeah. Can you believe it? Uh, you don't realize how much pressure you're under until it's over with. So it was right. kind of like, wow. I know, right when you finished, you called your father. Yeah. Do you care to maybe tell us what you guys talked about? Oh, you, you know, he was uh, he was just saying, you know, who'd you play? Who was it? Who you got tomorrow? You know, but he said, you know, you'll probably have to quit baseball commentating and do this. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, let's go one step at a time. Right. You're actually playing Andy Block. <laughs> yeah, Andy, and you know what? I really admire him. You know, I've, I've read the book on the MIT stuff and how smart he is and how much of a math major he is and right. unbelievable. So uh, they know that I'm not even close to Andy because uh, they, I can't even cut chips accurately. <laughs> You're like, uh, what percentage is what? that? Yeah, I have no I idea. Know. <laughs> I got good cards. I like them. Let's go. There you go. All right. Good luck in the round of eight. All right. Thanks, thanks. Oral. Let's play some poker. Let's do it. You're running over me, man. I don't know what that means. Got to get lucky here, Doral. The big boy. No paint. No paint. <laughs> I was feeling sexy, but... Shoot. Get us the diamond. Try not to sign the ball. Freddie, can you sign this for me? I thought I was going to get your signature. Thank okay. you. Coming up, Gus Hansen faces off against Phil Locke in the mouth battles Chris Ferguson. More action from Caesars Palace in the National Heads Up Poker Championship after this. Welcome back to Caesars Palace for the conclusion of the round of 16 at the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by Vonage. Some of poker's biggest names are in the clubs and spades bracket, and most of them have made it through to the round of 16. Phil Ivey takes on J.C. Tran. Mike Matisseau battles Chris Jesus Ferguson. Jonathan Fiery Justice Little goes up against the 2004 main event champ, Greg Raymer. And at the feature table, Gus Hansen goes heads up with the Unabomber, Phil Locke. Now, Gus, you've beaten Don Cheadle and Scotty Windigid here. What can you expect from this match? Well, I think I have a slight disadvantage. I mean, he's got the, all the fashion with the black coat and the fancy T-shirt. Kind of intimidating, right? <laughs> a little bit intimidating, but I'm going to play my chance. I'm going to play my chance. OK. And that is why I can't win, because Gus always makes himself the sentimental favorite, even if God, I mean, I'm not a better player, but even if I was equal, you got to take the, give the win to the sentimental favorite, you know? He's likable. Well, up until this point, the Phil Locke that everybody knows, the running around, the calling for cards, where has he been? Who's going to show up at this match? When you go to Bellevue fourth floor, you never know what you're going to get. And that's the same thing for Phil's mind. I'm just playing, you know? All right. Well, good luck, guys. May the best man win. Thanks All right, dealers, let's get the cards in the air.
And welcome alongside Ali Najat at Caesars Palace, Matt Vaskersian. Eight players from the clubs and spades brackets looking to advance to the quarterfinals. Mike the Mouth Mattisau battles a seemingly unstoppable heads-up force, Chris Jesus Ferguson. At our feature table, Gus the Great Dane Hansen takes on Phil Locke. But we get you started with action from one of our outer tables. Pre-tournament favorite Phil Ivey is up against one of poker's most underrated tournament players, J.C. Tran. You got it. J.C.'s accolades number many. Although Phil Ivey is going to be the more recognizable of the two faces here, J.C. is not going to be intimidated as we see him raising early. Phil was suited Jack Trey, and Ivey has made the call. Our flop, King-10-7, two diamonds. Flush draw for Phil Ivey, gut shot, straight draw, and position for J.C. Neither player looking to fire a bet out there. Phil pairs his jack on the turn. J.C. can now make a straight with an eight or a queen. Ivey has checked and Tran bets out 4,200. Almost a pot size bet there from J.C. And Phil makes the call. The river, four of spades. Phil still with the best hand, going to check it over to J.C. J.C. knows the only way he's going to win this pot is to fire a bet. And fire he does. He bets 6,000. 21,000 in the pot. Oh, Ivy it. makes the call and takes down the pot. So Phil Ivey induces a bluff from J.C. Tran to take the early chip lead in their match, moving to another outer table. Rising star Jonathan Little goes heads up with a 2004 World Series champ Greg Raymer seated on your right and still rocking what uh, you refer to, Ali, as the stylish tangerine linen. That is correct. Greg working on a sponsorship deal with Tommy Bahama. Greg is raised with King 3 offsuit and Jonathan 10-9. He makes the call. For Greg Raymer, this is his third straight match against a relatively unknown player. The flop comes King Deuce 8, top pair for Greg. Jonathan Little, though 23 years old, has won a WPT title. Jonathan has checked. Greg bets 2,400, and Little makes the call. Turn is a jack of hearts. Little now has an open ended straight draw as opposed to 10 high. Both players check the rivers of four of hearts. A little bit surprised to see Greg check in position with top pair there, although it may have been in the interest of having Jonathan lead out Adam on the river as he's doing now. Ten high. Greg calls the 6,000 and takes down the pot. So Jonathan Little is unable to push Greg Raymer off top pair as Raymer extends his lead over to the matchup between Mike Mattisau and Chris Ferguson now. This is a tough matchup for Mike. Chris has the best record in the history of the event at 12-3 and three and appears to have this format all but figured out. Some would argue that Mike's toughest opponent is himself. But Chris Ferguson surely not going to help matters. Mattisau has called the 2400 and the flop. 6-8 king, and Chris pairs his king. Real big hand for Chris here. He's going to check in position. No flush draw on the board. And now Mattisau pairs his queen. And that's exactly the type of thing Chris was looking to have happen in checking his hand on the flop, is allowing Mike to make a hand that will get him to call or commit more chips to the pot. Mike calls the 6,000. And the river. Three of hearts. Quick check by Mike. Three of hearts, a very safe card on the end for Chris. Ferguson bets 15,000. It's also a safe card for Mattisau. If his hand was good on the turn, it's good on the end. Nice hand for Chris Ferguson as he takes nearly a third of Mattisau's starting stack. Up next at our featured table, the always dangerous Gus Hansen takes on Phil Locke in his antics. Hansen has relentless aggressive play. Locke has the hooded sweatshirt. Hansen and Locke go heads up. Next. Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship in Las Vegas. Our featured matchup is about to get underway. You want a bet? The Great Dane and the Great Leather Hoodie. <gasps> I gotta shut off my brain and like not connect with you because if I connect with you, I'm just like, it's gonna be like 90 10, you know? I have to just gear into poker. And I, got, I can't communicate with you. I can't open those channels, bro. It's just maybe in between hands a little bit. But during hands, I'm going to be as stoic as I can be because 